So since we are discussing the MFE program, um, let's maybe talk about the, the, the rankings that we could win the same, same category. Because then as a consumer, then you say, listen, I don't have the time. Let me, let me, get, let me pick the number one or the number two, so at least I'm safe. So what is your, what is your beef for the rankings? <laughs> Okay, so let's circle back a little bit to part of the past question and part of this question together. Sure. Um, so the history, I think, is a big part of it, but it's also very concerning to me on the same side because I'm seeing a few new programs coming out, which I like to view as like diamonds in the rough. They're programs that are really putting the time and effort into making rigorous programs. Some of the new ones, I think, would be good. And I'm also concerned on the other end because there's I'm not going to name a specific name here, but one of the top-rated programs, definitely top five, probably the last, I don't know, five, 10 years, whatever. I had one of their graduates who's been in the industry now for a good, I don't know, 10, 15 years. He came to me and was like, hey, this program is awesome. I learned a lot of material. I went back. I visited the campus. I talked to students. He's like, it's not the same program. And now it's coming back to the fact that he's seeing all the data science coming in. And so what ends up happening, instead of doing a lot of depth with your financial engineering and quantitative finance, It's like they're trying to spread too many electives or it's like you end up taking, again, like some of the worst programs, you take the stochastic calculus, you know, you take numerical methods, like optimization courses, and all of a sudden it's like you're wasting time taking a data science class, but it's not depth. You're just getting like, here's an introduction, this is how neural networks, this is how gradient boosting works, and then they quickly jump over to like another topic on like, let's do, I don't know, a different type of decision tree like random forest. And so I think some of these top programs that have been older need to be careful as well because they're starting to degrade their value, which is that highly rigorous analytical material in substitution for trying to cover too many topics at once. And I think it's hard to cover too many industries and too many tools if you don't really have the depth inside that program. Mm-hmm. So kind of something to think about because I, I know some programs are adding data science. I think that's good in many ways. But if you're going to do data science, you got to make sure that you're like digging really, really deep into the math. And not just teaching these kids how to type in Python code and hit enter and TensorFlow generates the model for you. And we see that a lot in the industry. There's a lot of what we like to call button pushers where people are just pushing the button and models are coming out, but there's not a lot of kind of rigor behind it. So, Because it, there's, there's two kind of programs, right? There's the one that uh, have your set number of courses. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of them with lots, as you mentioned, lots of electives. Like, uh, I mean, usually these programs have 30 credits, one to two years. So you start with uh, your, your core thing, and then you've got, you know, I mean, some of them are lots and lots of electives. Right. And yeah, I mean, how could, they, how could you put them all on the same standing, stack them up in terms of ranking when, you know, the, this, this program, within, even within the same program, you could have people doing a lot more machine learning Mm-hmm. A lot less finance and a lot more math and a lot more. So it's kind of, uh, and you're right, I think they, they, they're trying to, you know, you got to get people to join. So you want to appeal to the, um, but that but that makes it even harder than for someone to say, let me pick a, a program because uh, I guess unlike the MBA, which you kind of know what you're getting. Mm-hmm. I'm not familiar though. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, you've got math, you've got engineering, you've got finance, now you've got um, machine learning, some of them are adding blockchain in there. <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's hard to, like, for example, students always ask me, like, Dimitri, rank these programs, and I hate when the question's asked because electives are kind of like a double-edged sword. On one side, if you have the ability to customize your degree, and you do take all those very rigorous classes... You create like this awesome program that's very specialized for you. But I've seen programs and I've been in programs where there's so many electives that students are out taking like the easiest class or the most fun. And so you have two students, same degree, same graduation year and everything. And mm-hmm. one's like this super quant with an awesome job. And the other guy's working in like public policy or something that has no relation to quantitative finance. And so it's hard to separate these out when you're ranking programs and students, right? Everyone's applying for a job. It's like, is their program good? Is it bad? Now you have to start digging into electives. And how does an employer know which electives were good electives versus bad electives? So it does really muddy the waters when you start adding more electives into a lot of these programs. It makes it challenging for the student and companies and programs and everything. 